dear learner welcome to the NIOS senior secondary biology course i am dr mayank sagar and we will continue the topic of reproduction and population control menstrual cycle the reproductive cycle in the female primates example monkey apes and human beings is called as menstrual cycle the first menstruation begins at puberty and is called as menarche which is seen in the at the age of 11 to 13 years the permanent stoppage of menstruation or cessation of menstruation in a female is called as menopause which is seen at the age of 45 to 50 years in human females menstruation is repeated at an average interval of 28 to 29 days cycle of events starting from one menstruation till the next one is called as menstrual cycle that is one menstrual cycle is composed of 28 to 29 days now menstrual cycle can be divided mainly into three phases the first phase is called as menstrual phase the second phase is follicular phase which is also called as proliferative phase the third phase is luteal phase which is also called as secretory phase now menstrual phase the cycle starts with this phase in this menstrual flow occurs and lasts for 3 to 5 days the menstrual flow occurs due to the breakdown of endometrial lining of the uterus by which blood is shed off the menstrual phase is further followed by the follicular phase in the follicular phase primary follicles in the ovary grow to become fully mature graafian follicle the cells lining the uterus grow rapidly by which it regenerates and these changes are induced by the levels of pituitary and ovarian hormones the secretion of gonadotropin like lh and fsh increases gradually in this period and stimulates follicular development both lh and fsh attain a peak level in the middle of the cycle that is about 14 day which is the half way of the cycle rapid secretion of lh which is also called as lh surge induces rupture of graafian follicle and thereby release of ovum that is called as ovulation the last phase is called as luteal phase the remaining parts of the graafian follicle transforms to the corpus luteum the corpus luteum secretes large amount of progesterone which helps in maintenance of endometrium maintenance of endometrium is very essential for implantation of fertilized ovule and other events of pregnancy in the absence of fertilization corpus luteum degenerates and marks the beginning of new cycle that is when there is no fertilization the corpus luteum degenerates and marks the beginning of new cycle the ovum reaches the uterus via the fallopian tube on 13th or 14th day which remains there up to 48 to 72 hours that is why the mid half is also called as fertile period the days from 10 to 17 of the menstrual cycle is also called as fertile period cyclic menstruation is an indicator of normal reproductive phase and the point to be noted here is that the absence of menstruation indicates pregnancy but it may also be caused due to some under other underlying causes like stress poor health anemia etc this picture is showing you the menstrual cycle as you can see in the horizontal bar there are different phases of menstrual cycle like the first phase menstrual phase the second phase proliferative phase and the third phase is secretory phase there are uterine cycle levels in the first phase there is bleeding so there are less blood vessels and progressively there is more formation of blood vessels the ovarian hormone level estrogen is increased around day 14 and progesterone is increased around day 20 to 29 ovarian cycle in the midway the graafian follicle releases ovum and ultimately changes into corpus luteum the gonadotropin hormone level both lh and fsh are increased during 14th day and this is also called as lh surge which helps the which helps the graafian follicle to release ovum now fertilization and implantation the fusion of ovum and sperm 
leading to formation of zygote is called as fertilization and this event takes place at ampullary isthmic junction of the fallopian tube and the point to be noted here is that fertilization can only be occur if both ovum and sperms are transported simultaneously the sperms remain viable in the female genital tract for, for 24 to 72 hours sperms are injected into a female genital tract and this process is called as insemination via the penis the motile sperms rapidly swim rapidly and fuse with the ovum to form zygote blastocyst become embedded in the endometrium of the uterus and this blastocyst embedding in the endometrium is called as implantation and further implantation lead to pregnancy now what after formation of zygote what are the events after the formation of zygote? The mitotic division starts as the zygote moves through the isthmus of the fallopian tube towards the uterus and this division is called as cleavage. It forms 2, 4, 8, 16 daughter cells which are called as blastomeres. The embryo with 8 to 16 blastomeres is called as morula. The morula continues to divide and transform into blastocysts. The blastomeres in the blastocyst are arranged into an outer layer which is called as trophoblast and an inner cell mass and this inner cell mass helps in making of different tissues of body. The trophoblast layer then get attached to the endometrium and inner mass cell differentiated as the embryo. In this picture you can see the different events after the formation of zygote. The day one is composed of two cells and the day 2 is a 4 cell embryo and day 3 like 8 to 16 cell which is called as morula, day 5 blastocyst which is differentiated into outer layer which is called as trophoblast and an inner cell mass and ultimately it gets embedded in the endometrium layer of the uterus and leads to pregnancy. Now very important structure in pregnancy placenta. The chorionic villi and uterine tissue become interdigitated with each other and jointly form a structural and functional unit between the developing embryo. The placenta is connected to the embryo through an umbilical cord which helps in the transport of substances to and from the embryo. And the important thing is to note that placenta is also act as endocrine tissue and it produces hormone like human chorionic gonadotropin which is HCG, human placental lactogen which is HPL, estrogen, progesterone, relaxin etc. And HCG, HPL and relaxin are also called as pregnancy hormone as these hormones are only secreted in pregnancy. Now what is the function of placenta? The placenta facilitate the supply of oxygen and nutrients to the embryo. Removal of carbon dioxide and excretory waste material produced by the embryo act as endocrine tissue and placenta is permeable to respiratory gases, nutrients and antibodies. HIV virus can pass through placenta to the embryo via blood. Now the fate of inner cell mass. It differentiate in three layers. Ectoderm which is the outermost layer, mesoderm which is the middle layer, endoderm which is the innermost layer. And the function of three layers is to give rise to different tissues of the body. Stem cells, these are the specialized cells which have the potency to give rise to all tissues and organs of the body. Now it is also seen that the people, some people preserve stem cells. It lasts for 9 months or 38 weeks which is also called as gestational period. In the first month embryo heart is formed. By the second month, fetus develop limb and digits. By the end of first trimester, that is 3 month or 12 week, most of the major organ systems are formed. By the end of 5 month, baby starts moving with the appearance of hair on head. And by the end of 9 month, fetus is fully developed. Now the delivery of fetus and lactation, parturition. The process of delivery of fetus is called, called as parturition. It is caused by vigorous contraction of uterus during the childbirth. The signal of vigorous contraction of uterus triggers due to the release of oxytocin from the maternal pituitary and helps in expulsion of baby. The amnion bursts and amniotic fluid is discharged. 
the umbilical cord is tied and cut and placenta gets discharge lactation the secretion of milk from the mammary glands is called as lactation and this period of secretion of milk is called as lactational period what is colostrum the milk produced in the initial days of lactation is called as colostrum and it has features like it is yellowish in color rich in nutrients fats and proteins and contains an antibody that is iga which provides passive immunity to the newborn and the hormones involved in the lactation are prolactin and oxytocin prolactin is released by placenta and oxytocin is by the posterior pituitary now the question arises how twins are produced normally one ovum is released in a reproductive cycle but sometime more than one ovum is released if two ovum are released and are fertilized by two different sperms such siblings are called as fraternal twins they may be brother brother sister sister or sister brother but if the zygote formed by single ovum and sperm get separated and starts developing independently into two they are called as identical twins uh, but the important thing to remember is that the identical thing identical twins are always of same sex in this picture you can see the identical twin and the fraternal twin identical twins are monozygotic that is they are formed from a single zygote and in dizygotic there are two different zygotes separate placentas now very important topic infertility and assisted reproductive technology infertility inability to conceive in spite of unprotected sexual cohabitation is called as infertility and those people which exhibit infertility are called as infertile couples the reason behind infertility is physical congenital drugs immunological psychological etc to cope the problem of infertility we have assisted reproductive technology which is also called as art these are the specialized technique to help infertile male and female couple to produce babies and first of a first of them is test tube baby in this method ova from wife or donor and sperms from husband or donor are collected and are induced to form zygote under simulated conditions in the laboratory these simulated conditions are similar to the human body zygote or early embryo can be transformed to a female fallopian tube or uterus zift zygote intra fallopian transfer the zygote or early embryo with up to 8 blastomeres could be transferred into fallopian tube iut that is intra uterine transfer embryo with more than 8 blastomeres are transferred into the uterus these were the in vitro techniques that is they are performed in test tube now we will talk about in vivo techniques fusion of gametes inside the female body first of them is gift gamete intra fallopian transfer transfer of an ovum collected from a donor into the fallopian tube of another female who cannot produce one but can provide suitable environment for fertilization artificial insemination in this technique the semen is collected either from the husband or healthy donor and is artificially introduced into the vagina or into the uterus human sperms can rapidly be frozen using liquid nitrogen and stored in sperm banks without losing its fertility fertility drugs these are the drugs containing fsh that is follicle stimulating hormone which are injected in a sterile female to promote graafian follicle to induce ovulation population growth in india india is the second most populous country of the world which comprises 15% of the world's population and the reason behind increasing population is decrease in death rate imr imr is infant mortality rate mmr maternal mortality rate and increase in number of the people at the reproducible age there are many problem posed by the country by the increasing population and it is very necessary to control the overgrowing population because it has impact on society family and nation now how to stop this growing population the first of 
the first method is by providing education imparting education to the masses about population explosion and make them aware of various ways of fertility control by motivating smaller families by using co various contraceptive methods inset incentives should be given to couple with small families use of contraceptive a wide range of contraceptives are present in the market and what is an ideal contraceptive it should be user friendly easily available effective reversible and with no or at least side effects now different contraceptive methods first of all is natural method in natural method we have rhythm method periodic abstinence withdrawal or coitus interruptus lactational amenorrhea first of all is rhythm method the period in the menstrual cycle before ovulation phase is referred to as safe period as no egg is available for the fertilization by sperm periodic abstinence this is a method in which couple abstain or avoid coitus from days 10 to 17 which is a fertile period of the menstrual cycle when ovulation could be expected as the chances of fertilization are very high in this period the third one is withdrawal or coitus interruptus in this male partner withdraws his penis just before ejaculation so as to avoid insemination lactational amenorrhea this is based on the fact that ovulation and therefore the cycle do not occur in the period of intense lactation but it is effective only up to a certain period now comes the barrier method the principle of barrier method is to prevent physical meeting of the sperm and ovum first of all is condoms these are the barrier methods made of thin rubber latex sheath that are used to cover penis in the male and cervix in the female just before coitus nirod is a popular brand of condom in india what are the advantage of condoms protects the user from sexually transmit diseases both male and female condoms are disposable and it gives privacy to the user and can be self inserted diaphragm cervical caps and valves are also barrier methods that are made up of rubber that are inserted into the female reproductive tract to cover the surface during coitus this first picture is showing you the picture of diaphragm and cervical caps they prevent conception by blocking the entry of sperm through the cervix during coitus they are reusable spermicidal cream jellies and foams are used along with these to increase contraceptive efficacy next the most important and most popular method of contraception is iud that is intrauterine devices these are inserted by specialized doctor or expert nurses in the uterus through vagina and example of iud's are multi load 375 copper t copper 7 and progesta cert and how iud performs they increase phagocytosis of sperms within the, within the uterus copper ion release suppress sperm motility and fertility fertilizing capacity of sperm the hormone releasing iud make uterus unsuitable for implantation and survive cervix hostile to sperms these are ideal contraceptive for the female who want to delay pregnancy and or space children next comes the oral contraceptive pill oral administration of progesterone or progesterone estrogen combination is another method used by the females they are taken in the form of pills example saheli which is a non steroidal pill and it is a once a week pill and it is made by cdri lucknow that is central drug research institute of lucknow and it has a very high contraceptive value with less side effect what is what is the action of pills they inhibit ovulation and implantation they alter the quality of cervical mucus to retard the entry of sperms next comes the injectable method projective progesterone alone or with combination of estrogen can also be used by female as injections or implants under the skin their mode of action is similar to the pills but their effective period is much longer than the pills the second photo is showing you the picture of implants which comes with the brand name of implanon now comes the surgical method this is a terminal method to prevent any more pregnancy first of all vasectomy it is performed in males and tubectomy it is performed in females 
In vasectomy, the vast difference is cut and tired through a suture. And in tubectomy, the fallopian tube is cut and tied through a suture. These methods block the gamete transport and thereby prevent conception. And these techniques are highly effective, but their reversibility is poor. Medical termination of pregnancy, in short, called as MTP or induced abortion. Government of India legalized MTP in 1971 with some strict condition to avoid its mis misuse. MTPs are considered relatively safe during the first trimester that it is always advisable to go for MTV in the first trimester that is up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. Thank you. This was all about reproduction and population control.